Time for three, two, one, baby. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello to another episode of a genius of brain. What's going on, you beautiful people? Hey, man. Um, I want to bring you on this hike. What hike? Well, <laughs> second though. How high is well, it? Okay, yes. so here's the thing. Okay, I know you're afraid of heights. Yeah, but it's really worth it because by the time you get to the top. It's fucking insane. Like there's, it, it feels like a hill on a valley, like sound of music, but it doesn't look like that when you're going up there. Is this in LA? Yeah. It's in Simi Valley and it's kind of off trail. So there is a trail, but it's not an official trail. What's it called? It's, um, I think it's called like big sky or sky park or some shit like that. I forgot, but there's a, there's a dog park there and I found it because there's a huge dog park. I'm talking like it, it's like an acre. Oh, did you take Jess with you too? Yeah. I thought she was scared of heights. Is she scared of heights? She gets vertigo, but she challenged herself. And it made me just love her even more. Oh. My fucking disapproving Asian dad was so proud because she challenged herself. Yo, fuck that girl. She's on this like tip of improving herself and stuff. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> She's like doing shit that she never did before and stuff. Ugh, yeah. Makes me sick. But it made me so happy that I ended up, we went to REI and, yeah. and then I was like, I'm going to buy you some fucking hiking shoes. Because she did it with the some, just some regular pair of Nikes that was slipping. So she was like slipping all over the place. It yeah. was hella scary, but she was like, you know, if I had some hiking shoes and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm gonna get that. And then she's like, I never did anything this like challenging before. But I was thinking about you because I was like, all right, I know I've been hiking with you. Yeah. I know how, how, how you get vertigo and you're afraid of heights too, but it's very like manageable. It's not as crazy as uh, when we did Pillbox. Like Pillbox was just oh, if it's not as crazy as Pillbox, yeah. I could do that because I, I here's the thing. But about there it. are parts though that that are okay, uh, small parts, very small parts. Because so there was like um, <laughs> so there's like uh, there's this place called Echo Mountain that I try to do. Yeah, and that's basically like the road is as wide as this table. Yeah, and if you fall, you're dead. Okay, like it's 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 that it's like a steep drop off, and I that was the first time I ever experienced vertigo, and I basically blacked out for two seconds and that's the part Damn. that scared the fuck out of me was but, i could have yeah. felt and i could have died i didn't i've never really blacked out like that before so what did you do go back down i i fucking when i came to i was like i kind of like was teetering yeah and i kind of snapped out of it i was like holy shit i freaked out i just hugged the wall and i ran down because i feel like mario would love this oh mario will do mario's crazy she would love yeah. that shit she, she's an adventure seeker she loves hiking that's her thing take her dude because for me this is it, it was it was easy moderate mm. but then like i'll attach a gopro to her chest and i'll <laughs> and i'll see what it's like bart said he would do it he said he'd do it with taika bart don't give a fuck dude. i know i bart know but he's also afraid of heights too yeah, but Bart also did pull-ups with Taika in a full, fully weight. That's true. <laughs> in a weight room, that fucking maniac. But it's it's cool because like I like going a little bit off trail because I like to not know. Yeah. What's gonna where I'm going or where I'm gonna end up to? Yeah. And then at the top of this mountain, there's all these trees, right? It was fucking crazy. You get up there and someone set up a <clears throat> swing on the tree, and it's this it's this whole side of L.A. that. I was never used like there's no smog over there. It's nothing but mountains. It's such yeah. a beautiful view. And then I get this feeling of like free. Did you, did you do that one hike uh, near uh, what's it called? Santa Monica. It's kind of like that where you, I've heard of that one yeah. by Malibu ish. Yeah, by Malibu. Yeah, yeah. I heard about I, I didn't do pretty, it. Though. I did that one. I, what, there was the clouds under you. Did you do that? Kinda, one? Sort of, okay. It was pretty high up there, though, but I did it because it was tiring as fuck. But it's kind of you're like. It, the the path up there is just all trees and mountainous. Hell yeah! But when you go up top, you see everything. So that's I feel that's like the an old piece of shit now. But but I love hiking. I love nature. Old people shits the the <laughs> shit to do now, man. That's like what all the Instagram folks do, anyways. They they go up there, they they show their asshole, and they're like, "Yo, I climbed this." I have no idea what the I fuck. I don't know how do these the girls post. fucking hike in a thong. I don't know how they do it either, man. <laughs> I, they're just wearing nothing. They wear absolute. I'll tell you this though, I don't mind it. Thank you, thank you very much. It's 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 nice when you're hiking in front of me. I don't know. I want to go to some secluded ass place and just fucking. You you would love the hikes in Kauai though. Like Kauai, yeah. like the 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 hikes are treacherous as fuck, but the the views are amazing. I mean, since you lost like a gajillion pounds, like hiking to you now is it different? Do you I, feel like it's different? Still, it's still tiring. Like it, it doesn't, for example, because you know, to my complex, well, I thought that after I lost the 60 pounds, like going up those stairs were going to be easier. It's not. <laughs> it's fucking tiring as fuck. 
I don't know. But, but is it scary though? Uh, do you feel different? Like, do you feel more confident because no, you can control the, yourself more? Or like, no, it's, the height thing is, is always affecting. I just watched this documentary about this dude. He's a Sacramento native. Yeah, and he free climbed, no ropes, no nothing. Oh my god! Up, um, what's it called? El Capitan. What the fuck? Like, like bouldering, right? Like, bouldering. just no, no rope, no rope, no nothing. <sighs> up, it's like I think he climbed like three thousand feet or some shit. Oh, god. Dude, it took him like two hours to do it Damn. without a rope, bro. Without a fucking rope. No, that means if he fell, he died. I know. That's it. That's. I think that's how they get their adrenaline rush. It's he, like no turning back. They got to keep going. And then you kind of saw his personality throughout this documentary. And he, if he didn't find climbing, he would have been a serial killer. Like it's, <laughs> it's one of those, <laughs> like I kid you not, it's one of those things. Like thank God he found climbing Shit. because he would have just been murdering people and cooking their intestines for fun. Fuck. Because he would say some really just off colored shit in terms of this. He goes, you know, if I died, you know, do people really care? They don't care. Life goes on. Even my girlfriend. Like, if, if, I, if I died, she would find somebody else and she would move on. It doesn't matter. Damn. You know. and That's kind of suicidal. He, it's, it's just he's definitely on some shit where, like, emotional attachment, it's only for... He feels it with an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Other than that, it's it's super superficial. I could kind of feel that. Yeah. My my brother's like that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think um what they were saying is, like, a lot of CEOs, uh-huh. extreme sports people, yeah, high achieving like athletes and shit like that, they they have they have the same what I don't want to say symptoms, but like characteristics to people that are like oh shit, crazy. that's why that's like why cycle, I'm, yeah, successful as fuck, yeah, because I was here like successful businessman and artists. Artists oh, okay. like it, like they're they're showing like Picasso art and yeah. like a serial killer doing art and it's like similar. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. The way that their brain is wired and shit like that. Do I just had this conversation where I'm saying like the craziest people are the most successful man? Like all these like actors, like fucking Jim Carrey, he's insane. But did yeah. you see his artwork and his body of work as an actor and a comedian? Yeah. The fuck, man. But I don't want to be like him though. He even said that like I wish everybody was rich and famous so they know how it. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's fucking profound because everyone wants to be rich and famous and they think that it's going to be better. And then they become, it's like, if you had the opportunity to become become that, you don't want to do it. I just want to be rich. Fuck the fame part, man. <laughs> like, fuck the fame part, man. You want to be rich without the work. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's what it is, man. He, it, it's weird how much people put value into what somebody else says gives them value. Like, I feel important because people think that I'm important. Yeah. And that's a very sad way to live because that stuff disappears, dude. Even the even celebrities at the highest level, right? Damn. They're not going to feel the same type of fame when they popped off the very first time and they were popular for the first five or ten years. After a while, they just become a relic. And if you base your life on what other people think about you, dude, it's going to be hard, man, when you start becoming, quote unquote, irrelevant, as how they call it nowadays. Irrelevant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who, who really fucking cares, man? Yo, if you got money... And it's just coming in. You're pretty good, dude. Yeah. You you now you get to choose what your career in life is. But I do know a lot of entrepreneurs that want fame because they have the money part. So they want the attention now. Oh my god, what are you gonna yo? Unless you're a bachelor and you're just trying to just get pussy twenty four seven, what the fuck all that shit? I think dude? it's validation. Like, oh really? I think people want to feel like they matter. Mm. So like that's why like you know a lot of people want likes on their comment. Uh, you know like it's. It's just attention. Like attention's an important thing. Like societally, like like you know, I mean, in society, getting a pe- attention, getting validation, knowing that you're special, things like that. It, it we're wired to want those things because it huh. makes us feel valuable in the social hierarchy world. Okay, yeah. So like, it's kind of like if you think about like primitive time, right? Like, uh-huh. like if you are, you know, the guy that always catches the biggest elk. And everybody, you're the talk of the village because yeah. David here always catches the elk, right? Yeah. It's going to make me want to be the top dog and compete because I want to be the biggest elk catcher now. Mm. So so then, like, because if you're the biggest elk catcher, like, all the girls want you because you get the biggest, like, meat and, and everyone likes you. Oh. So I, it, it, and it's so like, maybe I'm just the weird one, huh? I mean, I think it's natural to want those things, but then I think it's like this weird, sick, twisted thing. Yeah, I don't know? think I'm above it because I think I, I I enjoyed it when I was younger. So I think everyone, everybody yeah, did. Yeah. You know, I'm not above that shit. Like, what the fuck? I'm I'm I understand. But it. you want it through skill. Yeah. So it's different. Like, 
Like if you are the top dog on the basketball team and you're really good and then you, you feel like you deserve the fame a bit, right? Versus someone who's just popular because. Yeah, I like the validation from like, like for example, the other day or it's been happening recently actually where a, a few fans have been coming up to me saying, not so much, I love your stuff, but they said, yo, I watch your stuff and I've been watching you since I was uh, like 14. I'm yeah. in college now. And because of you, whatever it was that I said or from the advice videos that I gave, they're like, I chose to break out of my shell. That's dope. Stop being so shy about things and, you know, just go out there and failing and learning new things about life instead of living in my small bubble. Yeah. Which was something I always wanted people to do because I was that kid. Yeah. I was that fucking... I call it a loser because I chose to to close myself off because I was always comfortable. Yeah. And I, I just didn't want that for other people, you know, especially if they followed me. And yeah. it happened about three times in the past like couple of weeks where somebody said that. And that's the validation that I, I seek a lot. Same here. It's where, you know, they say thank you, but I'm saying thank you to you too because you're showing me that the stuff that I did, it worked. You know, not just for me, but for the few people that did listen, it helped them out. Yeah. And that's the validation that maybe I seek. You know? I mean, that's the only reason why I want fame is so I have attention from people so I could open up their minds or see life a little bit differently than yeah. what, you know, like, because I know a lot of people feel trapped yeah. and they don't know how to get out of it. And then um, it's it's really like me speaking to my younger self. Yeah, it's, it's kind of selfish if you think about it. It's just me wanting to. Like, I kind of get this sense of relief when I hear that younger people figured it out. And I wish someone told me something. Yeah. So I created, you know, like all this art and everything that's that I do. It's like whether it's talk shows or skits or anything, it was it came from me like trying to figure out how to deal with like growing up yeah. in, a, in, in this in this world and, and the uh -huh. pressures of of parents and, and society and relationships and all that stuff. And then I just package it through content, you know, and then people watch that. And I think they, they understand what I'm trying to communicate and then they learn from it and they feel better from it. Totally different from like, you know, just making a video. I want people to understand too, is that when a lot of people give advice, yeah, they're not saying it in the sense of, yo, I've always known better than you. Most of the time it's, yo, I made those same mistakes. So let me tell you something that I wish I would have known during that time. Yeah. So when I say stuff like, yo, that's dumb. Don't do that. It's not because I didn't make that mistake too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to my dumb yeah. ass self. I'm, yeah. I'm like, dude, man, you remind me of myself. Yeah. So the advice that I give, it's, you're right. It's selfish in part because I'm really talking to myself. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure I don't make those mistakes too. And when I see that in people that I care about, I'm like, yo, man, I, 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 I've been down there and I've done it. And I still do it to this day. So don't chill. Make sure you don't do it. I think that's that's the main reason why we immediately click because we have similar values and what we're trying to, our content is motivated from the same thing. Yeah, it's motivated from what we learn through life and communicating that through whether it's art or just conversation. Dude, what is like just King's motto in the first place? Teaching man? good things in a bad way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's what I fuck with the most, man. And um. When I got asked this question a lot was, yo, why do you curse so much? You know, don't you think that you could reach out people if you stop cursing as much? And this is what I said to them. Not everybody's you. Exactly. There's a lot of people that are like yeah. me. Where we grew up and the way that we spoke yeah. is how I speak now. Yeah. Just because you digest information in that way doesn't mean that my audience is going to take it that way. Do Some people exactly. just want it said to them the way that they want to hear it. They right? want to hear from people that they relate with. Yeah. So teaching good things in a bad way resonated with me too because yeah. that's what I did. You know, it's like, um, I would say, for example, like some people will come up to somebody in a breakup and they'll say stuff like, yo, man, like, I'm, I'm sorry this happened. Like, you'll get through it. And, you know, I would say it in a different way. I'd be like, yo, fuck that bitch, man. Let's go drink. Right. <laughs> Same advice. Just Same advice. In a different way. And we know what that means, which brings us to the topic of the day. So me and you, we've been friends for such a long time. I think it's like, over eight years now. Yeah, it's been a long time, man. Fuck, dude, it's hard. But it was like when we all kind of met, like the friendship just clicked. It was like yeah. one of those natural, like you didn't have to pretend or like flirt. We just were friends yeah. and we just stuck together like that. But for the longest time, um, uh, you know, like me and Bart, we, we kept the race hidden. You knew who we were, but yeah. like, you know, we did it because for other reasons that we explained. But yeah. like, 
recently when I did come out and things like that, and then we we do videos together, I've been noticing like there's things like, oh, I can't believe David like hangs out with all these non-Koreans. He's not Korean enough or whatever. These Japanese evil people. They yeah. come here. They uh, they use our people like a piece of shit. <laughs> but then you get flack for not being Korean enough. Yeah. Or like I get you know like there's controversy. Obviously. Like, oh, why did you hide yourself that you were Japanese? Were you ashamed of that shit? Exactly. Like, Between God, Japanese man. and Korean and things like that. But like, we really don't look into those stupid ass things. Yeah. And, you know, to that, man, there's so many things to talk about that. Like in, in general, like, let's just, let's just start with this, right? Um, I was always taught specifically because I grew up in a Christian household to judge people for who they are as individuals. So your, did your family um, kind of tell you the the all the 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 struggles they went through through the war and all no. that stuff no no that's but did the they thing. did they do it like your grandparents must have right <laughs> yo my grandpa my dad my grandpa was dope dude this fool fled this motherfucker said the war's happening he got on a little boat with his family went to an island wow <laughs> so there was a lot of korean people that did that because yeah, they didn't yeah. want to be a part of the war <laughs> yeah and they didn't want to die i see so they 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 escaped off i guess like to small islands or something like that that's from what i remember and uh, there was like a, a like a group of people that just did that and waited the war out. Yeah, because they were scared; they didn't want to die. And that's that's what my grandpa did. And I think my aunt was born off the coast of some kind of small island of oh. Korea or some shit like that. My eldest. So aunt your anyways. personal your your family personally didn't go through any tragedies through through the maybe, hands of Japanese people. Maybe my mom's side did, but my mom doesn't talk much about her family. Oh, you know, okay. and we had relatives that did. But like I said, my dad doesn't dwell in the past. Yeah. And that's something that I learned from my father a lot. He doesn't dwell in the past. He understands the history. He understands what happened and what went on. Yeah. But he does. Even my grandpa doesn't, though. Yeah. Yo, I'll put it to you like this, man. My grandpa uh, could uh, write in Japanese and in Chinese or whatever, in, in Hanmun, which is like Chinese and stuff. It, it was taught to him at that age. And he would show me like, hey, look, you know, I could write in Japanese and all this other stuff. Wow. He didn't say it like, you know, fuck Japanese people <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know, I hate those are fucking Japanese <laughs> people. You know, he didn't do any of that yeah. stuff. He showed me that he could do it. Damn. And my grandpa didn't tell me stories about hate either. It's yeah. just not in my family like that. I think we, I guess my family deals with it in like that happened. It was fucked up. But we're going to move on from it. Yeah. And I think that was the whole, the Christian side of things. I mean, but there are still Christians that can't let go. Like, it's not just a Christian thing, right? It's just, I think your family knows how to forgive. Yeah. Because I, I did have other Korean Christian friends that um, they they just, they they always had to bring it up. And then like, I'm like, I didn't do anything. I mean, you know, we're not like, going to get into religion, but that's super yeah. unchrist like <laughs> It is. Like, yeah, yeah. And then I grew up Christian too. Yeah, so that's like, super not Christian Yeah, though. yeah. But you're right. Like, I mean, I think there's a lot of hypocrites no matter where you go. Right? Yeah. Like, but um, like, my first experience of that when I was a kid is like, my mom didn't tell me anything about like that stuff. Right? Yeah. And, and they didn't deny it. They just told me like, uh, you know, we... Japanese people did a really bad thing during yeah. World War II. That's what they told me as a kid. Yeah. And then one time my Korean friend in elementary school was having a sleepover, but then like I wasn't allowed. And then and then I, and my friend's like, sorry, you can't come because you're Japanese. And I'm like, why? And he goes, well, my grandma says she doesn't want you there. And then he was crying. He was sad about it. Because he didn't understand. He didn't understand. I didn't understand. I was sad about it. So I went home and I told my parents about it. And my parents were like, no, nah, forgive him. It's cool. And then that's when they told me the stories about like how Japanese people bullied everybody. And yeah. not everyone's going to like you because of that reason. So I was like, oh, man, that really sucks because we're kids. And it's like. And you have to pay for that. Right. And then the my, my friend's grandma is crazy perpetuating it yeah i don't i mean she probably went through something really fucked up yeah for her to like project her hate toward a child uh-huh but then i don't know like i also don't can't say anything because i'm like yeah. i don't know what happened i don't know what kind of pain she went through you know and i think like the the sad part about that is like i don't want to transfer hate over yeah right so for your friend's grandma Rightfully so, she should be angry. That's something that she went through. A hundred percent, man. And I, I can never... But she should be mad at the people that did wrong to her. Yeah, not, and not to the kid. Not to the random kid yeah. that's born in America. And even <laughs> and, and to that point too, Like I, but I still understand where she's coming from. It's so... You know, there. I don't know if you, people even know about this, but there was something called like comfort women. Where, yeah. you know, like 
women in Korea were used as sex slaves. Yeah. Like that's, that's some fucked serious up. fucked up shit, you know? And when I hear about those stories, it makes me sad. Yeah. But when I look at a Japanese person, I don't see that though. Yeah. I see the history that happened. And th- this could be from a Korean American perspective. You, right. you know what I mean? But I'm also saying this too. I have relatives and friends in Korea and they also vibe with this same concept too. Yeah. They travel to Japan consistently for yeah. work and even just from work for fun. So I have a friend in Korea right now that has a Japanese wife. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, for, for people to come out and say like, you don't know what it's like to be Korean. No, you actually just see it in your small perspective exactly. as well. I see it from, yeah. I'm trying to see it from everybody's perspective. Mm-hmm. And yes, it's anecdotal because I'm saying it from my friends in Korea. That are like that. There's actually a lot of Koreans in I feel Japan. Like it's divided. Yeah. That are um I forgot what they're called, but they were in Japan since like throughout history, there's always been Korean immigration. Yeah. But they changed their name to Japanese names, but they're a hundred percent ethnically Korean. Oh oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Like one of Japan's Aretha Franklin, like she's like a soul singer from the sixties, right? Yeah. She's hella famous. Her name is Arawaki. Uh, Wada Akiko. Okay. But she's a full blooded Korean. Oh, really? But she has a Japanese name. Um, the founder of Kyokushin Karate, Mas Oyama, mm-hmm. he's a Korean, full blooded. But what the fuck? Yeah. But, but, you know, he, uh, there's a lot of, like, like, there's a, I mean, they went through ethnic persecution. Yeah. So they changed their name to Japanese names to blend in. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, same with the, the owner of Lotte. Like yeah. I always grew up thinking Lotte was a Japanese company yeah. and you, you know, we had this, like, we thought it was, com- yeah. and then what I found out is right after World War II, um, he, he, he's a Korean immigrant that came to Japan and then he built a, a, a company in, in, in developing Japan, selling gums and candy. Oh, which is what Lotte is about. It's about snacks. Snacks. And they have and a then, Lotte world. <laughs> yeah. And then he he was, he be, he was he became successful in Japan. And then he took it to Korea yeah. after Korea's uh, uh, war went down. Yeah. And then he, he built up there. And then he basically had two massive companies in two countries. Wow. But he's, he's full-blooded Korean. So, like, a lot of people don't know that there's a lot of, like, intermingling. Yeah. There's de- there, they just found out that in the royal family of japan there is um korean dna like because i don't know if you're familiar with like korean history but like you know how they had the three kingdoms or yeah, whatever, yeah, the yeah. Silla and the whatever right uh-huh. but um one group or one kingdom uh got taken over by another one in korea yeah and then they needed to run away because yeah. they were facing persecution mm-hmm. so the royal uh, uh family in japan brought them in as um refugees oh wow but they you know but they're friends with these royals of korea yeah. so they're like well you can't live like a peasant in here so they integrated them into the royal family and they yeah. married them so the the emperor was saying like um his great 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 aunt or grandfather or whatever was a product of half korean half japanese Oh, so wow. in the royal bloodline, there's like recent, I'm talking recent, like 400 years ago. Yeah. DNA, fresh Korean royals that are like blended in. So it's it's pretty, the relationship there is really like close. Yeah. There's a lot of history, even in recent history, man. There's like a lot of you know, closeness, like but if, they don't teach that shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we look back far enough, there's, there's, there's stories and signs of positivity and negativity, you know, it, depending on how far you look back, you know, and, um, when I, when I, like, it's just so odd, man. Like I, I don't understand why people want me to hate a specific group because of something that happened in the past. They want me to dig so far in my past, not even my past and somebody else's past that happened yeah. to them and say, Hey, you should hate these people because of what they did back then that you weren't a part of, but because they did that, you should hate them even though you never did before. Yeah. And I don't have that ability. And it, I, I just don't have that thing to blame somebody for something that they didn't do to me personally yeah. that we are trying to move past. 
because it stops progress. It stops healing is what it is. Yeah, for sure. You know, and it's just so weird. Like, yo, I've had comments where they're like, yo, man, you you think you're so Korean? You don't know anything about a Korea and what a Japanese people did. You always make a pun of Korean people. Like, you always say Korean people are angry. I kill you. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean? You mean the, the death threat doesn't really solidify that opinion? I know. <laughs> you know, you son of a bitch. Like, how dare you, man? Do you think they're um, Koreans from Korea? Or do you think they're Korean Americans? That they are, are definitely this? Koreans. The ones that I've read are like, I could tell they're recent, either recent immigrants or they're Koreans from Korea. Because, because they don't it, get the context in the joke. They don't get the context in the joke. Yeah. And even their writing is in fob. Mm. So it's like, oh, it's, you know, I could tell a little bit. And some people aren't, and they're probably Korean Americans, and they have a lot of hate towards whatever that is. Yeah. And any kind of like satire you make about Korean people, like don't shit on Korean people. You f- chill, <laughs> relax your fucking sphincter. It's a joke. That's what people do. We're allowed to make fun of our culture because it's our shit. It's an inside joke. You fuck face. Relax. They don't man. like those kind of jokes. They huh? don't. They don't. They don't get it. Like we'll say this. Like dude, they don't man. like roasting themselves. Yeah, they don't like roasting them. Like I'm like, yo, man, Korean people, dude, they're fucking angry. Like we're not angry. I kill you. <laughs> it's like you're proving the point. Yeah. Like what do you mean? I'm not angry. I'm gonna kick your ass. Huh? Damn. I'm like chill, dude. Like relax, man. Like, it's a joke. That's like the Korean cre- cre- people Damn. get angry. It's because we're passionate as fuck, man. Yeah. It works on both ways, man. It's I like- get it, though. It's like, um, I kind of see why Chill. Koreans have to, like, really band together and, like, and, and kind of, like, be aggressive. Because, like, yeah. cause, like, Korea's been picked on a lot. Like, yeah. like China, Japan, everybody kind of picked on Korea. It's a new country. Yeah. You know, like, so so to, to build that identity, to build that no one's going to fuck with me anymore. Like, it's yeah. almost like I can see how the culture can evolve into being like, I'm not going to be pushed around, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's so interesting because I love Japanese culture, man. I, I but love, it's almost like you're not allowed to or else uh, you're backstabbing like Koreans. Yeah. And I and I like Japanese culture just because um, <laughs> it all started with anime, bro. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. Anime. I, I kind of feel like it's Asian Americans that perpetuate the hate more than the people in asia because k-pop is hella popular in japan korean dramas like there's all these old japanese ladies that love korean dramas man like and when i'm out there my mom tells me yeah like there's no feeling of that in japan like amongst her and her friends like yeah and and you know they like they're the biggest trading partner like Japan and Korea they do the most business yeah so I'm like is it is it something that like people carry on here and then they just like maybe I feel like some people feel like they have to or they feel like they're a trader or something you know yeah it's it's this false sense of loyalty sometimes is what I feel like a I like a and it's I, like they they seem like they move past it yeah I don't know <laughs> it's, it's like an ideal that I feel like sometimes people feel like they have to you know I guarantee you 50, 60 years from now. It's going to be a lot easier. I hope so. It's it's going to be a yeah. lot easier. And I, I think if you want to hold that hate in your heart, I can't tell you to change it. Yeah. You know, but I want people to think about it like this. What does it do for you? Mm-hmm. And what does it do for the healing process? And there's a there's a big thing, I think, about Japan not giving Korea a formal apology. Yeah. And that's the thing that I think is like the last thing that's really holding that healing point. Because I, I, I think Japan gave a formal apology to China. But they did. Um, well, I did read some stuff about um, Japan recognized and sent money to Korea mm. about war and stuff like that. But then I don't really know the details. I think that recently the controversy is because of the island that they're fighting oh, over. Oh, uh, Tokto. Yeah, so they're fighting over that island. I actually don't know too much about that shit. Yeah. So and, I'm not going to have an opinion about it, but yeah. it looks like a dead island to me. But I do know that there's other issues too, like where Japan doesn't um, teach about their war crimes in the history books. Mm, so and a, a lot of Asian countries yeah. are upset about that and things like that. And um, I know there's just uh, little America things. doesn't do it either though. That's true. <laughs> I mean, what country does? What country does? What? Yeah, but... I mean, I, I for me, it's like it's kind of pointless because I can't run the I can't change what that country does. And yeah. I'm an American. At yeah. the end of the day, I'm an American. So I'm like, well, it, it fucking sucks that that's happening. Yeah. And I, I, I think that people should figure out a way to move past it and learn from it. 
but not deny it. I think denying things in the history denial is bad. probably is the part yeah. that hurts the most. Yeah. And that's the stuff that people can't get over. But you can't tell a country how to conduct themselves. You yeah. know, you can't tell them, yo, you should be teaching this in your schools, not your country, not your world. Vice yeah, because what if they don't want to teach that to children, but they're okay with college students? Like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Because in American history, too, they're not teaching about all the fucked up shit America's doing no. across seas. They're no. not doing that. And they don't, I think it's it's state specific. Yeah. Because like, people in Georgia don't learn about Asian American history. Oh yeah, very true. Like, very true. Like, Hawaii and California, yeah, yeah. there's 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 a lot more education on that. Uh -huh. But that's why people in Kansas grow up thinking that we're all a bunch of fucking foreigners and not really American enough. Because yeah, people yeah. don't know the contribution contributions that we all made. Like as our like as our family members, everybody like like all the the war veterans and and people that contributed to America, like and you know, it, it's I feel like in America too, like one of the things is like nationalism is so wishy washy here sometimes. You yeah, know, like I'm a hundred percent for America, right? But if I ask somebody, what do you know about American history, right? What do you know about this country and its laws and politics? But, you know, it's it's sometimes it's a farce. I think it's because my history is different from their, their history. history. Yeah. Yeah. Because like we have a bigger land, too, and a lot more people. So yep. it's hard to control that shit. You know, like what Jess grew up learning. She grew up in Texas. Right. Mm -hmm. So first off, whatever political group your state leans toward, that's what the education is going to be. Yeah. So if she's just Republic, Republican state, Texas and Texas is very Texas centric. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk about the Alamo. They're talking about, they have a lot of Texas history yeah. and they'll barely cover like yeah. the 13 states or they, they don't, they don't really care too much about whatever happened in Boston, uh -huh. but they'll cover a little bit of it. Right. Yeah. But then like, you know, my old roommate, Kevin, he says when he grew up, they were so Boston pride and then the, the whole colonies and uh, there's and, a lot of state city pride type of shit. Exactly. Yeah. So their U S history is going to be centered so much around local shit that like they don't know about Cesar Chavez you know they don't know about like yeah yeah you know, like that's, that's 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 true that's their th yeah so then when we grow up we have a different idea of U.S. history yeah so I think that's where the fighting comes yeah and it also goes back to if when, when we go back to that topic like I think that's why for me I, I didn't think about the whole Japanese Korean thing yeah you know because I, I think I rep Sacramento more than anything else like Sacramento seriously yeah because I don't care yeah, I, don't, I, I, it's, you know, and it sucks that people want me to care and be a little more hateful about it. And I, I just, like, I love Japanese shit, dude. Yeah. Like, first of all, my girlfriend can read and write and speak in Japanese yeah. and she's full blooded Korean and she could speak Korean, read and write. You, and I don't see you guys as someone who is ashamed of being Korean or hate. I mean, like you specifically told me I want to marry a Korean girl so I could continue the culture, speak the language, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't get more prideful of your and, and have love for your culture than that like yeah. to want to continue it through having korean children yeah speaking korean language yeah you know like like hey, even if it, let's say i i didn't marry mario right yeah and let's say i married you know let's say a white girl my my prerequisite is that that she girl has to learn she korean. has to learn to speak Damn. korean um and vice versa if she was like let's say she was uh i don't know fucking um middle eastern or something right yeah and she wanted me to learn like farsi or some shit yeah i would do it I would, I would do, I would fucking take classes every night so I could communicate to that family and be respectful for that culture. And I wanted that same thing to be reciprocated back to Damn. me and I couldn't find somebody that would do it. So there was, you know, a couple of people that I dated and they, things were great. We vibed really well, but they didn't understand that culture part and yeah. they didn't understand why it was important to me. Yeah. And they just said like, I probably won't do it. And I'm like, then it's probably not going to go around them. That's Go crazy. more than us just, you know, fooling around. So it, it sucked. And. To me, I never thought I would end up with a Korean girl. Oh, really? I never did. Damn. I did, probably dated about two Korean girls my whole life. And that's about it. And Mariel's one of them. So that was just a, a, a weird thing for me. And I found out how important it was for me to really preserve my culture. Mm -hmm. it, I didn't realize it, man. I didn't realize how embedded it was into me. Yeah. Like how much I loved being a Korean person. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that tells me that you do have Korean pride. In a good way. Yeah. Not like the the insecure way. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, 
it's like you don't need to be so Korean to the point where you're you don't want to be anything else. You don't I, care about any other culture. And I'm not trying to shove that shit in people's face. Yeah. You know? It's like, hey, did you know I'm Korean? Yeah. Like, first of all, dude, I just met you. Like, why is that the first Yo, thing? Yo, that- I have... That's where my Korean history channel came from because we would make fun of my friends who would always preach Korea like the gospel. And I'm like, okay, bro, I heard enough from yeah. you, your uncle, everybody. Can we just be people? Yeah. Like, Let's just we chill. don't have to talk about... Like how Korean invented this and that and that. I'm like, this is funny, but like, uh, can we just talk about fishing or some shit? You like, know, like chill, man. Yo, there's yeah. some people, dude. There's people that I've met. Yo, so when I was uh, when I went back to Sacramento, I met this dude. And mind you, he's a really nice guy, right? And I, I wish some people understood like time and place and understand social context, right? Yo, if I'm at a bar, I'm chilling. We're drinking. We're having a good time. So it's like that whole Dave Chappelle bit where this dude came up, right? The whole whole thing. You know, What's up, my brother? So I, just, you know, so we made. He was trying to pe- uh, preach the gospel to you, or what? Not gospel. He was ta- ta- talking to me about African history. Uh-huh. So the guy comes up. He goes, "What's up, my brother?" So just to, he goes, "Yo, I'm an artist. Let me show you some of my art real quick, man. Uh, just to put it out there, my brother. <laughs> you know, uh, we were actually weren't called Africans. That's something that was a white construct that Europeans put us. We were known <laughs> as the Moors." I was like, all right, bro, what's your name? Let's start with that yeah. first. Like, it was so social context, bro. We're just trying to chill, man. Like, yo, that would have been a great conversation in a different setting. Yeah, if I was in a, if you were lecturing and I was in school and I walked into African history class, yeah. thank you very much because I wanted that information. Or I inquired about it or we were at a coffee shop or something. Right. Bro, we're blasted drunk. I'm not trying. <laughs> Time and fucking place, yeah. dude. And then I just sat there. I was just like, oh, my God, what is going on? Yeah. It was this whole thing. Like, let me tell you uh, something about what the white people did to us. Oh, all right. You know, like, OK, like, this is cool information, man. I appreciate Damn. that. This is not the time and place, homie. Like, chill. You know, it just made everybody super uncomfortable in the circle. That's we just kind of were like, weird, dude. Yeah, I, 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 dude, nice to meet you, bro. Damn. You know, some weird, <laughs> weird shit, man. You know, what's funny. Um, my mom, she was like, so she she was um. She was always like trying to get me to have a girlfriend ever since like preschool. She was like, I wish you'd bring a girlfriend home. Like, cause she thinks it's cute being in a relationship and shit. Right. Yeah. And then, um, she, she would always be like, Oh, is she Korean? Like, and then I don't know why she wanted, she, she, I think for one, she thinks Korean girls are pretty, but she was like telling me that one day she had a, uh, back in the day, she had a boyfriend that was Korean. Ooh. She had a secret. He was a, he was a he was a Korean immigrant, but like born in Japan. Mm. And so, um, and she came from a prestigious family. All right, so like, so that's like a stain. It's not only the Korean part, but because he wasn't. It was more so that he the class part. Ah, uh, because he wasn't a part of like like royalty lineage. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure if he was like. The son of fucking Lotte or something is a, a different, different story. story. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, like <laughs> that's, that's Asian people for you, right? It's because like, he's Korean. No, it's because he's poor. Yeah, <laughs> that's more important. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. What they what yeah. you don't understand about Asians, it's like it's it sounds like the race thing, but what they're really saying is like, I want you to marry up in class or the same class. Yeah. And so like whatever social construct that was taught to them. Right. So my mom was like madly in love and she was like, yeah, like Koreans, they're so emotional and expressive and I loved him, but like I had to cut the relationship. And then, and then so like she, she was always encouraging of like me making Korean friends and he, she wanted me to have a Korean girlfriend and all this stuff. And then, so I think she always looks back because you know, like my, my, my parents split. And I think she always looks back and goes like, fuck, if I only married that Korean guy for love. I know. We, we would have fought every day, but we would have still been together. You would have been passionate. Yeah. Yeah. You, did you date a Korean girl before? Yes, I did. How was that like? Yeah. You know what's fucking crazy? So like, um, I, I dated here and there, but like one girl that I actually had a relationship with for a year, right? So like, I met her online through, um, I think it was Find a Pics. Remember oh, that shit? Like when you rate up in that. Picks, yeah, she dude. was fucking cute, right? Yeah. And then, so we were talking, and after a week, we realized that as ch- as children, we met each other. Because her family, her grandparents, rented a house that my uncle owned. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, and when they came over 
to like look at the house and play. I was there playing. Yeah. So because their grandparents recognized my face. Oh, really? Yeah. And this is when I was like 19 or 18. Oh, wow. So yeah, like they, she showed them a picture of me and all this stuff. And like, and then, and then, so and I my bet last you, I name bet you too. Thought you were gonna marry her at that point. You're like, we dude. about to get fucking married now. That's fucking fate. That's a Korean drama story. I dude. know. And then, I mean, we got along well and things like that. But um, I think we were both really immature at that age. Yeah. And she was a bit crazy for me. Of course. <laughs> she's the girl that I told you about. Where she was like, she's like, I feel that you love, like I love you more than you love me. So we can't be together. And then she yelled at me and she hung up. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. And then 10 minutes later she called and she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you so much. I'm like, what the fuck dude. And when I, I first saw you when you're playing with the dookie in a sandbox. I thought you were the one forever. Yeah. <laughs> OMG. <I know. laughs> dude, that's so crazy. Yo, yeah. that's wild, man. I, you know, if at a young person, if I heard that story, yeah. if I was a part of that story, I'm like, yo, we get married, girl. That's it. That's really? Because I, I was, I yeah. wanted to, like, oh, you know, it is, it is kind of like, what a coincidence, huh? You know, prior to me, I used to live in a small bubble. Sacramento's yeah. a small bubble. And all I could think about was after college or whatever, becoming a teacher, I wanted to be an educator. Yeah. And then I wanted to have a house, get married, and have a kid. That's wow. It. That's all I thought about, man. That's all I ever cared about. And then I got dumped for the first time. Damn. And then it really opened my eyes to how much of a fuck up I was. Like, <laughs> you are such a fucking loser, dude. Like, the only thing that you could think about right now is this girl. Yeah. Who is this girl to you? Yeah. Who is she? That's true. And it took me after like maybe like a year and a half because I was still trying to get back with her for a year and a half like a fucking loser. And then finally something snapped in me, dude. I was I had this moment where I was like, dude, what are you doing? You are making a fool of yourself. Wow. What the fuck are you doing, dude? Like I remember I was just fawning for her attention so much. And she looked at me one day and she was like, dude, you're really annoying. And I was like. What do you mean I'm annoying? So you were too sprung. I was were you so felt, sprung? Were you seemed desperate and she lost interest. Yeah, and I yeah. just and I when she said that, I went home and I was like, first of all, I was devastated. Oh yeah. God, what do you mean I'm annoying? I love you. <laughs> you, 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 you woman, you fucking treacherous witch. And then I uh I I looked back and I looked at how I was behaving and I was like, holy shit, I don't have goals. I Damn. don't have something I want. Yeah, I'm How old were you when you recognized this? I had to be, what, 19? Shit. No, I was, I was 20. I'm sorry. I was 20, 21. And I was like, hold on a second, dude. What the fuck are you doing, you 20-year-old fuck? You're, you're, you're chasing after this girl for what, dude? Like, who is she to you? She doesn't care about you. She doesn't give a fuck about <laughs> you, bro. You know, you're, you are annoying, David. You're yeah. fucking annoying, man. Wow, I can't believe you were able to self-reflect like that it, it hit me like a ton of fucking bricks when Damn. she said that to me that was my aha moment she i goes, wish i had someone be that mean and blunt to me yeah. i never had that i think it took me a long while to recognize because they would always be like oh it's me not you mm. she'd be like oh i just want to stay friends i just kind of lost interest or whatever and, and the weird thing that was happening was like she was a type of girl too who i believe i'm very sweet to this day I'm, i still i still think she's a super sweet girl and i was the piece of shit and it's because she had that savior complex where she wanted to turn a turd into a piece of gold oh. and i was that turd for her <laughs> you know what I, mean? I was that fucking turd and um you know in her case like i had very i had i had, at the at that point i had very low self-esteem yeah you know and for me i found value in what she found value in me so she because she loved me yeah I, i'm worth something yeah. so when she broke up with me i was like i'm not worth shit Oh man! So now I, it's like the opposite. We have girls that treat us or think of us as a piece of shit <laughs> when we're really not. Yeah. <laughs> so we need people to bring us down a reality, yeah. right? Because our ego just went up here. That's the good thing. So my <laughs> ego, my ego was so crushed while I was with her. Um, she gave me so much value in my life that I was what I I wasn't trying to get back with her. I was trying to gain value again by getting back with her. And that was the selfish part of it. And when I realized how how stupid that was, how much of a fucking loser I was, I, I tried to change that immediately. I was like, bro, what are your goals? You need to have goals, bro. Your goal can't be to marry this girl with the white picket fence and Damn. have a kid. What kind of fucking shit is that? And that was my biggest life lesson. Damn. Forever in the history that I've ever lived, yeah. that was my biggest biggest life lesson and that was the biggest turning point for me Fuck. and that kind of set this onslaught of me learning how to be a hundred percent honest to be unapologetically myself yeah no matter what kind of flack you get and as a comedian you need that too she and was it, a good catalyst then she was yeah. she, she ruined me 
great. Great That's job. That's perfect. Yeah, shout out to her for ruining me. I wish I had someone that mean. <laughs> you to, do. You to, have to Jess. Say, I'm, I'm annoying. <laughs> you have Jess. No. <laughs> it's too late, man. <laughs> I needed it when I was younger. Yeah, but that, that was... Now she, it just hurts my feelings, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, she, she did some fucked up shit too. You know what yeah. I mean? And at, at the same time, like, I thank her. I hate her and I thank her. Because because of that moment, I turned out to be who I am today, who is somebody who is still a fuck up, but at least I could take responsibility for those fuck ups. Yeah. You know? That's, I mean, that's what everyone needs. I, I think, like, I would I remember, like, I would talk to, like, girls and I'd be like, oh, just tell me what I did wrong and shit. And they won't tell me. And I'm just like, fuck. Now you have a girl who tells you too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I respect that so much, though. It's like, I love you, you fucking bitch. I know, man. I, it's like, I always wanted someone that was straight up and honest with me. But now it's just too much. <laughs> sometimes man. lie to me, please. I know. Sometimes but lie I to me. I respect that way fucking more than someone who beats around the bush. Yeah. And 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 takes forever to get to the point. And I think I need to be told straight. I rest. I I respect that way more, man. I feel like with you and Jess, like one of the things that I saw the most was uh, a big change in how you saw affection and love. Because yeah. the person that I saw you with before, it was very like, I'll care about you when I feel like I want to care about you. <laughs> You know what I mean? And she was uh, like that. She yeah. was like that too. Yeah. She was off too, you know? Yeah. And you guys had a very odd and off relationship. Yeah. I think like if that person came or went, it didn't fucking matter it to didn't. you. It's like you were here because it's convenient and yes. she thought about it that way too. Yeah. And so it was kind of, I was like, is, does Joe not understand what love is? Like, is he a it's robot? Like, it's like sex friends. It, it was, it yeah. was, that's what it was. And then when I saw it with Jess was like, uh, you didn't know how to deal with your emotions very well because you didn't feel this way. It's like, yeah. yo, you're, I fucking hate you, but you're not going anywhere. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like true love. Yeah. And that's how it was, it was for her too. Yeah. And for you too, it was such a weird thing that I was watching. It was like I was watching two people learning how to be human, you know? I know. Like, it's, I mean, both of us avoided any type of, what's the word? Confrontation. Challenge. Challenge, yeah. Real challenge in yeah. a relationship. I think it stems from us both being abandoned. We realize that we have these walls, real thick walls. Yeah. And it's easier to leave and to walk away with more pride and ego than be vulnerable and open up and try to work things out. Yeah. Both of us never had a relationship that lasted over a year. Yeah. If ever whenever, you know, like the infatuation is gone and things kind of like chill out, it's more like well, you're giving me problems and you're annoying, so fuck you. But for some reason, in this situation, we we can't. Like, we fucking hate each other from time to time, but, like, we just can't leave. There's and it can be, that. yeah, it can be destructive, but I think the point is once we can get over that hump, yeah, we start realizing that things can be resolved. Yeah. And it's like in the past, we just we just didn't resolve shit. It was like, well, fuck you, fuck you, okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's more like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's, that's the, that's the big part, man. Like that was the big part for me too. Yeah. Cause prior to me getting with Mariel, I didn't expect to be with somebody in a serious relationship until I was this age. Till I was 30. I was thinking to myself, yo, you know what? Fuck being in a serious relationship for now. I got career goals. I'm gonna work on that. And then when I'm 30, I'll think about getting, but that's just hiding. Yeah. You're just hiding from what you want in life. Yeah. And then when I met Mariel, uh, something clicked and I was like, there's something special about this girl. I don't know what it is, yeah. but I got to figure this out first. Cause I might regret it later. Mm -hmm. I, I was afraid of regretting it. Cause I saw somebody that I, I was like, yo, what is it about this chick? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That I, that I like so much. And then I was flirting with her. She ignored me for a couple months and lo and behold, you know, fast forward, we'll get into that story later when she's on this podcast, but she, we, we ended up together and it was one of the biggest, um, I'd say positive mistakes I ever made in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It always comes when you don't don't expect it to. Because yeah, I was dude. just like, I'm gonna fuck around and yeah. be come to Texas for yeah. some pussy, and that's yeah, about it. <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I mean, and you learn a lot too from being in a relationship, and like you, you grow a lot mentally, emotionally, everything. And then I think it's very important to have someone that gives you pressure in in good ways and bad ways. Yeah, because like. When things are too easy and things are too simple and not challenging, I get bored. Yeah. I'm that type. Like the girl that I was dating, like the the my Korean girlfriend and when I was 18, like she was emotional and crazy, but at the same time she was very easy in a way that I didn't have to work for much yeah. and she didn't piss me off. So 
I don't know, man. Like it just felt like I got bored. Yeah. She was a sweet, awesome person. And that for most of my life, that's how I felt about a lot of my relationships. So I would just get bored and then break it off. What did it make you feel like there's man, there's something wrong with me? Like like everybody is so no. sweet. No, I just feel like I want new pussy. Okay. Like I <laughs> honestly, dude, I like yeah. like I, I've yeah. been through that phase. I think I've been really burnt where like I I've been in relationships where I absolutely love this girl. And then it was puppy love, maybe like 16, 17 years old. We would like, uh, like we would fuck and all this stuff. And then like all of a sudden, um, this is what I hate about like that time and age is a lot of people can't speak their mind because they don't know what's going on in their heart. So they'll just, uh. people will just like kind of not give you an answer and break it off. And it's like, for me, I don't get closure. Yeah. So I'm obsessing over the fact that like, whether it was a lie or not, how they broke it off, I'm so fixated on the words of yeah. like, like, oh, they said maybe we could get back together in the future. Like, you know how like sometimes young girls don't like confrontation, so yeah. they'll leave it kind of open and 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 they're more socially intelligent, so they're not straight up, but they know it's kind of they they mean no, but they don't really say no. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're breaking up, but then they want to stay friends. And it's kind of confusing to a young guy. Yeah. So me being such a literal dude, like I'm like, okay, cool. So maybe in a month we could try again. Yeah. Instead of just accepting that it's over and moving on. Yeah. So like that made it really hard for me where it's like for a year straight, I'm just like waiting to get back with that person like a loser. <laughs> oh, dude, I know what that feels because like. Because but then they're still, they still want to be friends. Can you so do that though? I feel, I felt like so weird. Like, oh, cool. We're going to take a break. We're going to be friends. And then like, and then I'm going to get back. We're going to get back together. Like, that's yeah. what I thought when I was 16, 17. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of dudes go through that. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, they don't get a straight answer. And then it is a straight answer from the way she's communicating, but not how the guy communicates. Oh, because we don't want to hear that, dude. We're like, yeah, mm, we, something going to happen later, man. And that's what it was with yeah. me and, and the girl that broke up with me. Yeah. She was, as as a girl, as a homegirl, she was also like one of my closest friends too. Yeah. So I was trying to salvage the relationship at the same yeah, time. Yeah. And I, you know, I tried to separate my feelings from her and I couldn't do it because like yeah. I said, I had value. Her value to me was she gave me value to my life. And because I couldn't separate those two, there was no way. And, you know, I'll, I'll be real like that. You know, she was nice. Ain't nothing special about her, though. Like, yeah. really, when I look back at it, I'm like, yo, oh, what the I dodged so many bullets, man. <laughs> the people I put on a pedestal back then, it was, wow, I had low standards. <laughs> Holy crap. I There was this one girl I was really wanting to marry. Yeah. So, you like, I had these feelings and I had these thoughts previously, but I think it was for the wrong people and I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. So I shouldn't have expressed and felt these feelings because I didn't, I didn't know how to deal with them after. Yeah. So afterwards, it's like, yeah, I, I, I was going through a hard time, but I, I almost felt like it's dangerous to give so much of yourself to people. Yeah. Because yeah, they're not responsible. Meaning, like, people are fickle, dude. People are weak. Like, they'll say like they love you, but it's for a week. Yeah. You know, and then, and then it's like you give so much to them and then like people who are damaged have that problem a lot right. too because they're used to disappointment and failure and they expect that out of other people because exactly. it's happened so many times to them, right? Mm -hmm. So when people bounce, they go, oh, I knew you were going to leave. I knew you were going to bounce. So who, you know, who, who really fucking cares? Yeah. And it's know? also easier to leave them before they leave you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know a lot of friends now who are going through therapy yeah. as an adult because now that mental health is becoming something that's important. They're understanding. You're like, yo, I'm kind of fucked up in the head. Yeah. And it's okay for you to say it too because as, as a friend, I couldn't say it to you because then it seems like I'm not being supportive <laughs> of you, right? Right. So if I came up to my friend and let's say she was – albeit when I saw it from an outside perspective, I'm like – but you got daddy issues to the fucking max. But it's hard to say that to them. Yeah, I can't yeah. tell them, hey, you listen. You gotta let people figure out things on their own. Yeah, like yeah. how do I come up to her and say, hey, man, you're fucked up. <laughs> you know? 
you got to figure out your fucking problems, you fucking weirdo. Like, yeah. even if I said it in a nice way, it wouldn't come off that way because that's how they would hear it. Yeah. They would hear it as if I'm judging them. Yeah. But when it comes from a impartial party that you're paying for, then it becomes something like, oh, maybe this person is saying something. Because it feels unbiased. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, you know, some people, they say, well, you should have said something. No, because it wouldn't have come off that way. Yeah. And we're friends with these people and we know how they are as individuals. No matter what we would have said, they would have made the same mistakes and it would have I ruined mean, our friendship. Yeah, it's like if they want a family, if they want long, a long standing relationship, they got to figure those things out. Yeah. Because like for me, I can go two ways. Like I could be single and live that damn Bilzerian life till I'm dead. Yeah. And, and it's perfectly fine. It's just a lifestyle choice. But if I want kids that are going to be sane, and if I want a long-term relationship and a wholesome family, I can't. I got to figure it out. I got to figure out, like, what it is that's making me battle myself. You know, like, everyone yeah. does. And, and the same for our friends, like, that are going through problems, right? Like, they got to figure it out if they want it. If they don't want to change or go through the struggle... They're not going to get it. That's yeah. what I don't understand. Yeah. It's like you can't have both. Like you think it's the other person. Every time I talk to people, it's the it's it's always this like, well, if I find the right person or the right guy, then like everything's going to be easy. Fuck no, dude. Yeah. You're everyone's not- going to give you annoying problems. Everyone's annoying. Everyone like like you could be the best of friends. You could no matter fucking what you're going to fight. Yeah. And then that's when your ugly parts are going to be, it's going to come out, man. Yeah, man. Like my mom said it the best. This is what she said to me. She goes, you know, when I was going through stuff with Muriel and I was like, yo, this girl's pissing me off. Like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like I had a couple times in our relationship where I thought that maybe once or twice, it wasn't a lot or frequent, (laughs) but my mom was like, you know what, David, like give it some time, rest and think about it. She goes, the problems that you say that are big problems, she goes, those aren't big problems at all. Like you... No matter who you're going to get with, every girl's going to give you the same problem. Yeah. Every girl. It's yeah. about who do you think really helps build you up that yeah. you could stay with for the rest of your life if if that's what you want. Yeah. You know, if you want the family and kids, this is not something that you're going to run away from. There's no way that you're going to uh, just run away from this problem and not expect to have the same thing happen with another girl. Exactly. It's going it's gonna happen. to happen. So you have to realize that this is within your realm of controlling you, yeah. right? So I, I had to learn that the hard way where I was like, okay, if she's acting this way, then I could intercept it this way because it's it's not going to happen. Like, so for example, when she's on her period, I get mad because she's kind of mean to me, you know, a little mean. Yeah. So does that change the fact that I'm not going to have another girl who might be hormonal and albeit be mean to me then? I just have to learn how to deal with that yeah. stuff. It's not to say that it's like personality defect. It it's might just, be another problem. Yeah. It might be something else. Yeah. Like she might be nice during her period, but she might be completely disgustingly messy. Yeah. Or, or like, it'll be something. It'll be. Yeah. It'll be something that'll piss you off. Because it's not like I don't have qualities that she hates that she has to deal with too all the yeah. time. Yeah. You know, it's all a balance. It's a give and take. Right. And then can you live with it? Yeah. It's the most challenging thing ever. And I think that's why everyone's divorced. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Honestly, man, like it's not easy, man. Like it's it makes you look at yourself and you see the ugliest side of who you are. Yeah. And then you have to fight yourself. You're really not fighting the other person. You're fighting yourself. Yeah. You're fighting your ability to stay chill when you're being pushed. Yeah. And it's like, can you can you accept that? Can you put your own personal things aside and cater to someone who's calling you an asshole? Oh. Literally, right? Like, like you're you're in trouble for nothing, but you also have to be nice to them. Oh, 100 percent, man. And it's like that's the hardest shit to do. It's hard. It's hard to be nice to somebody <laughs> when they're being mean to you. Yeah. You know? And I and I and I'm very adamant about this. And I, you know, I have a couple of friends that I've helped out through this. Where I had a friend who was, albeit he didn't really understand this concept, and I was trying to get him to understand something. He goes, "Well." You know, she's being a bitch, so I'm gonna be a fucking bitch to her. You know, she's in a bad mood. Why the fuck should I be in a good mood? It's like, well, listen to me, man. Love is love is something very interesting that I, I think that I'm I'm starting to learn too. I'm starting to learn that you cannot if you wanna be in a serious, like monogamous relationship, you cannot choose when to love and not love somebody because it benefits you. Yeah. And that's it, I'm not saying it's easy. That's the hard part. So sometimes we have to say I love you. And treat them the best when they need it the most, even though it's hard for us. That's that, the hardest thing that, to do. And, yeah. and like I said, 
I'm not saying this advice like it's easy. I'm yeah. trying to do this the most. I'm trying to do it the most when Mario looks at me and she goes, I fucking hate your sloppy ass room, you <laughs> piece of shit. And I'm like, I understand you're in a bad mood, baby. I love you. You think that's easy, man? Yeah. Yo, I'm trying to I'm trying to have it in gladiator days where I would kick her off a fucking balcony, man. <laughs> like you yeah. asshole. Yeah. You know, I want to do that type of shit. But I also have to understand, and she has to do this for me too. When she's in a bad mood, sometimes I have to give her love the most when it's not convenient for me. And that's the hard part, man. I think I think I should have got with someone really stupid because like <laughs> the way I have unconditional love for my dogs. Yeah. They can never piss me off. Yeah. Because I know that it's all impulse. I know that it's just it's like the way a baby like I, I can't understand how some people get so fucking mad at kids like it's a, it's a child. It's yeah. a child. Like, what What do you expect? No. But then when I have respect towards someone, that's when they piss me off. It's so weird because I expect more out of them. Yeah. So it's like, I know you're smarter than that's that. That's true. That is 100%. Right? Actually, you helped me with that a lot too because you were like, hey, man, you got these dumb partners. <laughs> like, just... Think of them as idiots and expect those expectations. And it helped me out a lot too. Yeah, because you know what's going to happen. I was expecting the world from them. Yeah. Not them, like an individual. And I couldn't, it was dumb of me. I had to be smart about it. It's yeah. like, yo, why are you expecting this idiot to, to, to outperform you? It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 dumb of me to do that. Yeah. So it's true. You know, we even, <laughs> we have somebody we know too personally. Like when I look at this girl, she's very sweet, but goddamn, she's dumb as bricks. And I, <laughs> and I just look at her like, you're lucky you're very pretty <laughs> you know but she's like am i gonna get mad at her because you know she says stupid things it's no. more like nah she just she's just dumb dude whatever yeah. and she's okay with it and, and then she's you, happy yeah look, look it's, how happy it's she like is. it's like a six-year-old child you just look at them as cute yeah you're like that's fucking cute and i wish i could have that type of perspective when it comes to like my relationship or something like but i think because i put them on such a pedestal yeah that i expect so much more like strength discipline like yeah. like you know i and when they when they don't react the way that i know they're capable of reacting i yeah. feel personally disappointed and i get so angry because i'm like man you're getting pissed off over that shit or like whatever you know yeah and that's what's hard for me it's managing your expectations yeah that's, that's a, a big sp- part yeah yeah it's not negative either too i think don't don't think of managing your expectations to be like oh well don't have hope for anything that's no. not that, that's not what it means yeah managing your expectations being that you just know what you're gonna get out of it yeah just know it yeah you know know that the two hundred thousand mile Honda element that you bought is gonna break down and it's gonna cause problems the end the the air condition is not gonna work not a lot of people are not gonna know how to fix it people are gonna call you stupid and ugly for having that car and you're gonna have a friend named Bart that constantly makes fun of you understand what you <laughs> understand what you get. From what you bought. And that's what I'm learning. And it's it's like the forgiveness part. I think like there's a lot of great things that come out of Christianity. Yeah. The whole concept of like forgiveness. Yeah. Like true forgiveness is like is like really being above it and whatever people are acting like, just know that a lot of it is just impulse. It's not directly because of what you're going through, like Sometimes, you know, people are just irrational because they're in pain. And that's what I found it odd. Yeah. Like you had like the, the Korean Christian parents that that were hyper religious, but yeah. they'd be like, fuck Japanese people. Yeah. I'm like, yo, man, that's so anti Christian. <laughs> There's a lot of hypocritic like I mean, even the Japanese church I went to, man, they're like they're they're so Christian, but they fucking talk shit behind each other's back it's, all it's, day. You know what it is? It's it's cultural cu- culture and religion mixing and yeah. that that's where it becomes a pretty cuz unconditional love doesn't exist in asian culture a lot of them yeah so they don't understand the concept it's not ingrained in them yeah so i don't know um i don't know how i don't know yeah it's interesting yeah. well guys uh yeah man that 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 concludes that part of the podcast japan versus korea turned into love and relationships yeah man and that's that's what i want to that's what i want to fucking nail into people man Start start understanding people. Have empathy towards people. Yeah. It helps. It helps a lot. Yeah. Empathy does. It does. Yeah. Well, guys, we'll see you next time. Uh, stay beautiful out there. Shave your poop, poop poops. Your poops. Did I say poops? Poops. <laughs> or get it lasered. Yeah, get it lasered so it doesn't come or out. Or let it grow naturally and braid it. That's right. Brush your teeth and uh, be happy. Have a good time, mother people. Peace. <laughs>